Here we are live, Tim Blair. Yeah, hey, how are you doing, Sean Parker? And welcome to Mohawk football, a very special, special season, a very special season opener here at Parker Field. And we've been waiting for this one, haven't we? Indeed we have, and it looks like the rest of this community has been waiting as well. I tell you, the, uh, the field is looking great. The crowd has turned out. The weather is right. We were here last night for a little bit of a, of a toad strangler, I guess the old folks would call it. But we're here tonight with the Hazen Hornets have come to town. We begin the 40th season for this football field. First game played in 1978. We begin the 40th season for this edition of Parker Field with the Hazen Hornets coming to town, a, a team that the Mohawks traveled down to Hornet Field last year and began an excellent campaign with a 20-6 victory. And we also have something pretty neat coming up as the Mohawks have adorned their uh, uniforms with the American flag. They also have basically, I believe, every flag that is placed up on the stanchions around the city for uh, holidays. And they will be carrying those out onto the field with the marching Mohawk band out there. We have the coin toss going on right now. Yeah, there's some captains for the Mohawks. We've got Quentin Rees, number 49. Looks like Corey Fuller, number 10. That's John Jones, the All-State, All-Everything linebacker, number 33, number 16, Elijah Bellers. And the coin toss underway right now. They, they painted the big P on there this afternoon after the uh, rainfall last night and the uh, impressive win over the Junior Cougars here at Parker Field last night, a 36-6 victory. Now, Michael had unofficially, uh, Michael Harrell had Michael with 205 yards. Oh, you're talking about uh, my son. <laughs> my son played his first game as a running back after being a quarterback his whole life, and here he is in the ninth grade. Ten carries, about 205 yards, four touchdowns. But more importantly, uh, as a team, the Mohawk offensive line opened up things, and they rushed for 354 yards and held the Cougars to 105. And, and they've got a couple of talented running backs. Michael uh, Harrell, Coach Harrell, had a lot of uh, praise for uh, Coach Hendricks and his squad. Looks like Hazen will be accepting the kickoff. They will be defending the north goal here at Parker Field. Again, the uh, Hazen Hornets, they come in after finishing in the middle of the pack in conference last year. Actually, they have been a very, very successful program over the years. They've got a, a record over the course of the last 10 years of, uh, I believe, about 88 and 35. So nothing to sneeze at. Actually went to the state championship game in 2A, losing to Junction City back in 2014. But right now, all attention on the north end zone as we await the arrival of the Pigott Mohawks for 2017. The Hornets are contenders every year in that 2A uh, 6-2A conference, 2A-6, let me rephrase that. But they're also just a power. They've, numbers are down. I saw them scrimmage. As here come the Mohawks carrying the flag. Impressive sight as the two teams come on from the opposite ends of the field. A near packed house. And, in fact, considering how far those folks had to come from Hazen, they've got a good crowd across the way as well. Hazen is located, of course, on the other side of Interstate 40, down around in the Carlisle area, if you uh, want to use that for reference. So the Mohawks will be putting their defense on the field first as the uh, Hazen Hornets will be lining up. They've got an excellent uh, sophomore quarterback. Uh, he'll come in at about, well, they're going to uh, Blaine Toll. He'll be the quarterback. He's a sophomore. He moved up from an 8-0 and zero conference championship junior high team last year and all will be running the offense once they uh, get the ball but uh, the mohawks said they've got a few things that they need to deal with tim he nate is the ballard, real deal nate ballard buchanan cade <laughs> i watched this young man as a freshman and he could have ended my son's career when my son <laughs> dropped back for a pass and he rushed from the defensive end mm -hmm. and he hit him high and if he hadn't i don't know if uh, <laughs> deuce parker would still be playing uh, and we've got the ball teed up. I believe that is Trey Gossett, number 15 yeah, for the Mohawks. Gossett's been, he's kind of been leading the uh, the group in the kick. So it's going to be a relatively short kick. Take a bounce at the 20, and it's going to be picked up Boy, right there's there. a swarm. Oh, there's a ball in the ground, ball Tim. Ball in the ground. ground. The Mohawks have started this season off with a turnover. Oh, oh my goodness. On the bottom of the that is, is, Cade, or is No, that, that is B Bellers. Make that, you're right, oh, Cade Harrell. Cade Harrell comes up off the bottom of the pile. Not sure who coughed it up over there 
for the Hazen Hornets, but it'll be first and 10 for the Mohawks just outside their Hazen 20 yard line, about the 21. So short field, very, very short field for the Mohawks. And that really doesn't work into uh, Coach Harrell's ball control program, but we'll see how they handle it right away. We'll take it. Always good to uh, get an early score. There's quick Nick McKinney down there, uh, one of the former standouts for the big at Mohawks. And there's a handoff. Looks it's very familiar. Jones right off the right side. You're going to see a lot of that this year. Uh, as Coach Harold has said, when, they, uh, when other coaches game plan, they're not trying to hide a lot. They're going to line up. They're going to hit you with those big linemen. They're going to work their traps, their stunts, and they're going to move the football down the field in a very efficient manner like that four-yarder. Mohawks are adorning, adorning some new uniforms this season. Almost of a uh, gunmetal gray. It'll be That's Buchanan, right. I believe, this time, isn't it? Yeah, he's up over the 15, and he's upended. It's going to bring up a third down and about five, four, four and a half for the Mohawks. You know, the one thing about those running backs is not only are they fairly fleet, they got some size to them. They're hitting you with 200 pounds. Well, not only that, they also have a bunch of them. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to be a deal where I don't think anybody's going to be getting really, really tired. But we have, uh, once again, the, the flex T formation. Looks like Jones this time off that left side. Oh, and he is down inside the five. Yeah. Johnny Football has a first and goal for the Mohawks. Again, Tim, I watched this Hazen Hornet team a couple weeks ago at Truman as they scrimmaged the right. Truman Wildcats. They also scrimmaged the Mark Tree Indians, and they had their way with those two teams, a 4A and a 2A. Mm -hmm. But so did the Mohawks as well. well. They're a well-coached organization. The coach has been there 10 years. You can't be there and rack up a record of 88 wins and 35 losses without some uh, – because Kate, Kate Harrell's got a touchdown to start this season for two yards out. 10-31 mark of the first quarter. Cade takes it in from about a yard out, set up by the John Jones run. And let's see what they choose to do. They haven't really – we've got a PAT kicker, not quite like Brett Fuller, but uh, let's see if they'll go ahead and line up and go for two this one early. Well, Dylan West, number 57, comes in. And uh, Devin Riley, 72, is limping off a little bit. Yeah, not good to see one of your starting linemen come out with a little bit of a gimp there. But we got uh, Doc Mallard down the sideline to check him out. Kate split wide to the right. Go with the offset backfield. And yeah, Jones is in Jones for two. Straight ahead, unmolested. John Jones with the two point conversion to make it. Don't see a lot of traps at the goal line, but that's what they did right there. We got a couple of really quick guards. And right then, you saw Luke Boyd clear that. Bam, bam, and it hit hard. Two points. And the Mohawks pushed the lead eight to zero. Well, a quick, quick deal and a quick score for the Mohawks. Again, we, uh, we've we talked a lot about the, uh, the the great talent that's in the backfield, but uh, you basically we had Godding with 1,225, I believe, all-purpose yards last year, but uh, 758 for Jones, 751 for Harrell, nothing to sneeze at. If you read our football preview, Michael has set the bar very high. He wants to acquire 5,000 yards rushing this year. That's the goal, 5,000 yards rushing. That means you're probably going to play more than 10 games. <laughs> well, that was the 12 games last year. We had, I believe, about 49, or 49-79 uh, in all purpose yards. That's counting our uh, passing game. Going to be fielded at the 15. 32 gets the nod and runs into a big crowd. Dropped very close to where he was, where they were the first time around. Elijah Bellers was down there to wrap him up and then the all-state linebacker. I believe that was Demaria Buchanan on that carry. We have him as 33, but... Uh, Jones cleaned it up. Yep. So we'll get a chance now, as we mentioned, uh, Blaine Toll, the sophomore quarterback, controlling them, come up with a uh, out-of-the-shotgun formation, almost a wildcat look. Yeah, they're, we're going to call that the pistol. Look at them. Yep. They've got three spread, and Toll's going to keep it. He's oh, going to get hit he in the backfield. He is wrapped up right off the bat. I think it was Buchanan was on the bottom of the pile. It was Lane Buchanan, the junior, nose guard. 
He had a, a, a raft of tackles last year. We expect him to have a lot this year, but I think you're also going to see a lot of people show him uh, a lot of respect. Got time out on the field. We'll take a break. You're listening to Mohawk football, watching Mohawk football on YHC. At Ag Explorer, we're farmers too. So we know that farming's never been a nine to five job. Just like the farmer, we work overtime to bring you whatever it takes. Solutions like Enzone help you retain 47% more nitrogen with an overall average increase of 12 bushels per acre. Imagine what Enzone can do for you. Ag Explore. All right, we're back here at Barker Field as the Hazen Hornets will get their second chance. First time didn't work out too good. And they Another get the loss. handoff on the right side. Another loss. Tim, I want hey, you to. Sean Green on the carry, and that was just, they bum rushed him. That's the best way to put it. Well, that, Luke, Luke Boyd is in on that play along with, uh, again, Cade Harrell. You know, you won't find a better pair of linebackers in 3A than Harrell and Jones. That's right. They, uh, they were at the very top. Well, I believe Luke Harper may have uh, edged him out a little bit last year in conference. Yep. He's going to roll into the. Going to the left, he's going to keep it, and there's a play made. Another Good job. Another loss. That was Bellers, Bellers Dylan Bellers. Stop, Dylan Bellers. He fought the uh, blocker off, strung him out to the sideline, and did a great job out there to drop Blaine Toll for a, another loss. So they're looking at fourth and 20 now. They're going backwards. Well, Tim, they ran three plays, three running plays, and they lost, lost 12 yards. It's actually third down and 22. They uh, call it 23, actually. That's on running plays. At, and I think that, uh, of course, the Mohawks, they're fired up. It'll take them a little bit. Some of that adrenaline will work off, but I think that they've game planned just right. There's the punt. There's Might Lemons. Lemons is going to return it. He's going to take yeah, a knee there. It. Hayden Lemons uh, takes the punt at the Hornets 45, just outside their 45. And that's where the tribe will take over first and ten, leading at eight nothing over the Hazen Hornets here in game one. And take a moment to thank Pickett Realty, Mike and Pat Patterson for residential, commercial, or agricultural real estate anywhere in Clay County and beyond. Let Mike and Pat serve you. They've been serving the area for many years. 870-598-3142, Pickett Real Realty in Pickett, Arkansas. Of course, we mentioned that this will start the 40th season of this field's in use. Uh, first game was played back, I believe, it was September 15th of 78. Of course, the day before, I believe they also they had a junior high game before that because so, Kevin Wright scored the first touchdown in this field against Rector in a 6-12 loss, I believe, or 12-14 loss. The Lemons takes the pitch, sweep around the right, and he's going to pick up about three yards. They got so many different ways the Mohawks can come at you with this offense. Uh, they're going to line up in different sets, but basically you're going to look at the same thing. You mean? How's Mr. Daffron? One of those. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Going to be a second down and a long seven. About eight to go for the first down for the Mohawks. Gossett twirls, hands it off. It's That's, gonna be Gunner yeah. Shaw this time. His first time we called his number. Gunner Shaw takes it ahead for a gain of about three or four. Uh, bring up third and a short two. Shaw's shifty. He scored 12 touchdowns a year ago as a sophomore. Unlimited, unlimited touches. Uh, right, exactly. Uh, we had him at, uh, let's see, 652 yards. But he is hard to get a hold of. He is one of those small, shifty backs that once you've been pounded by the bigger guys, and I think John Jones is going to be just short. Well, he's close, spot. but he does not have to get does not have to get to the 35-yard line. It's going to be. Nope. He is really, really close. Let's see where they spot this, Tim. Yeah, I think it's going to be. Well, I don't know. It's hard to see from this angle. It may be just a bit short, and they're calling it short by a foot. I don't think we're going to see much punting out of the Mohawks either. Uh, we may not even get a chance to see them punt tonight. Uh, I know the coach Harold likes the opportunity to go for it on fourth down, and here we go. 
Well, they're in the goal line, D, and it is stacked up. The Mohawks are going to try to answer. You know, he's got it. Buchanan is going to have the first down. The fullback straight ahead, hands wrapped around both sides of the football. First down, Mohawks at the 32-yard line, 33-yard line of the Hazen Hornets. We got 6.48 to go here in the first quarter of play. 8-0. Mohawks on top of the Hornets here. You know, Tim, we talked about the Hornets being a power in 2A in the state of Arkansas, but their numbers are down. If you look out, they only dress about, what, 18 or 19 kids, and they've got some injuries, so they're not going to be very deep. But, boy, they've got some talent. And according to Max Preps, we were actually the highest rated team. Oh, Gossett wrapped up there. It was a coverage sack. He looked downfield, and everybody was covered up when he, by the time he tried to pull it down. They got in there. looks like uh, Junior Minor was one of the first ones there. Yeah, Caden Glover, the defensive tackle, the senior at 255 pounds, was, was there as well. Yeah, they kind of crashed down on Gossett, closed up the options. He did the smart thing, though, pull that ball down take the sack, get another shot at it. Don't risk throwing it downfield, getting a turnover. Uh, Gossett continues to mature and do a great job at the quarterback position after uh, taking over as a sophomore. Second down for the Mohawks. Gossett's gonna hand over left side. That is Mason Tillman, number two. The ball is on the ground. Oh, and I think that the Hornets feel like they've got it. Tillman, uh, someone hooked him, ball came loose and yeah, but- Hornets will get it. They are going to have it. So the Mohawks have returned the turnover. Right on the 30-yard line. The, uh, I think it's the 35. But if the way they were going backwards while ago, unless they've made some adjustments to the way they want to attack this Mohawk defense, it may be a little bit of the same. Let's see if they've uh, made any changes. I'm sure that they're going to talk about it. Of course, there's not a lot you can change if you don't have the horses up front to keep those linemen out of the backfield. Well, we've got 547 on the first quarter clock. And the Hornets have yet to have a positive yard. And you know what? There's a little change there. Yep. And that's going to be a short gainer for Keyshawn Gray. Well, I'll tell you what, the Mohawk defense continued to string that out over there on the corner. They did a good job. The left end, Mason Tillman, helped to bring that in. Gunner Shaw finished him off. Those linebackers are always there. They're, they're always close by. They fly to the ball. They do a good job of uh, pursuit without over-pursuit. He's worked on being, staying at home, taking care of your assignment. They've tried not to overcomplicate, especially their defensive backfield sets this year. Make it a little simpler and just take care of business. Straight ahead for a short game. Looks like the... Uh, Hey, John Green on the carry. He picks up about a yard, maybe. Luke Boyd was in there. Luke, come off the bottom. A couple of guys off the top. And you really can't say enough about the way the field looks. Uh, folks that haven't been here, we've got the new bleacher down there for the, uh, the band to stay in. They'll be getting a top over that, so it'll be weatherproof. And got a lot of great things here. We encourage everybody to come out. Uh, we'll be back here, I believe, in three weeks. We've got Portageville and Rector first. Four receivers in the set. Oh, and they start moving. Yeah. Quarterback rocked back on his heels, and I think that uh, that was when uh, Terrell Penn decided he should go. The ball start is going to eradicate what little gains they had on offense and back them up. That's well, Pumpkin Hollow season's coming up. Thanks to Daryl and Ellen Dalton, it's Pumpkin Hollow time. The season opens September 16th, and since 1993, it's the fall attraction that draws guests from all over the country. Animals, pumpkins, hay rides, gourds for the kids, corn mazes, horror in the hollow, Bubba's Butcher Barn, zombie paintball, and forest to fry it. Well, that's also a pumpkin zip line. Plan a trip, party, just go. Pumpkinhollow.com. It's pick 598-3568. Pass is completed. Yeah, that was Ethan Whitworth with the reception for the Check. Ethan Whitworth with the reception for the Hornets, but it's not enough for the first down. It gets them back to about a uh, five yards to go for the first now. Out in the flat there, they did a good job of keeping the uh, receivers in front of them, not giving up the big play, but they do uh, connect on that with Toll rolling to his left. He's a big kid. He's 6'4", 
about 224, kind of that prototypical high school quarterback. Snaps bobbled. Yeah, but he got it Lemons away. Lemons going to watch it go, and it takes a half oh, hornet my bounce. Yes, what a bounce for the Hornets. About the only thing that's Inside gone the well 15. for them. So the ball goes over to the Mohawks on the punt. Again, we have a score of 8 nothing. 4.05 to go. First quarter, you're watching Mohawk football here on White C. All right, spot the football at the 12-yard line for the Mohawks as they come up in the full house backfield. Tim, the Mohawks fumbled on their last possession. And I think that I'm sure he had a little, and it was funny, we, we were out here last night in some of the worst conditions that I've seen football played in a while. And there really were surprisingly few turnovers because of the weather. I mean, there, we had a couple, but considering it was coming down in sheets, wasn't too bad. Indeed. Kate Harrell on that tackle, and he's going to get about four and a half. Bring up second down for the Mohawks. Yeah, I believe that Coach Harrell would like them just to go ahead and take pretty much the rest of the quarter down, punch it in, burn up some clock. Uh, the best way to keep Mr. Toll from hurting you is keep him on the sideline over there or keep him on defense, as it were. Nothing doing on that one. And you know what? Uh, Buchanan fought for some extra yardage. Yeah, he ended up turning into something. Or is that Corey? I don't know. We've got Corey Fuller wearing a number 10, the utility man. I guess you'd call Corey his utility man. He'll line up wherever you need him, kind of the way older brother Brett had. And we noticed that he shows up with number 10 tonight. So, <laughs> Again, he's versatile, and he's a team player. He just says, wherever you need me, coach. That's right. The intelligent type that you can tell him what to do, they do it. Third down here for the Mohawks. Jones is going to take over the right side. He is short, and I don't think he got maybe a little foot if he got that. In fact, they say back to the line of scrimmage. That's going to bring up a fourth down, and we will likely see the punting team come on. Let's see uh, what well, Coach Michael Harrell chooses to do. Uh, Quentin Reeves has been taking care of the punting chores in practice. Let's see, he's back there to receive this snap. And he's also the type that you wouldn't be surprised to see him pull it down and take off. Quentin, uh, as most people would argue, probably the most all-around oh, physically gifted. Oh, that's a dandy, that's a dandy kick. This Fair catch, but number one, Rashid Mills says, we'll take it right here at the 48. And that's where it is, first and 10 Hornets. Oh, that. Mohawks don't can't get it going on that drive. They had a turnover. No, but he had yeah, about a 38-yard net on that. And, and you'll, you'll take that every time. Good punt. Got a little bit of spiral out of it there for Quentin Reeves. But we've had a chance to see Quentin on the basketball court, on the baseball diamond. He came in, what, runner-up, I believe, in the, in the state, state high, high jump last year in 3A. Athletic kid. And uh, basically, I believe he's about 6'2", 180. He'll go up with you. And excellent jumping ability. Uh, they're going to be looking to him for some good stuff this year. He's, he's out to this side, I believe, covering the wide out. Switching the play up. Going to move Junior Miner over to the left side. Single backfield. And they move number five into the quarterback spot. Oh, man. He hands it off, oh. and hello. Yes, yeah, that's, that's Johnny football. On Big Nate Mallard was there getting up off the bottom of the pile. I think he took his man to the ground and paved the way for John Jones to come in. And he takes uh, a John Green down for a loss of a couple of feet. You know, Tull's not lined up at, at quarterback at the moment. And he, uh, in the scrimmage the other night, he lined up a tight end quite a bit. Mm -hmm. He looks like a tight end. Mm -hmm. You played tight end at 6'4", didn't you? I did. 224, 225, what? Sometimes, oh. sometimes more, sometimes less. And there is a miscue. Oh, goodness. Jacob Weems, Jr., he has to go back. He also slid down and got up a little bit slow, but that was a big loss. That's going to back him all the way back up to, what, the 30-yard line, just outside the Hornet 30. That's a 30. 15-yarder. And they've got to get it down to the Mohawk 44 to get a first down. So, Tim, when you get a 15-yard penalty, you get the down over it. When you get a 15-yard bad snap, it's down plus the yardage. And, of course, long snapping, especially when you go with a, a shotgun, a wildcat, a pistol formation, 
you got to have a good snapper because it can cost you way more than it can earn you in the long run if you don't get that exchange down. All right, they go to the con- a conventional set with a single back. We were in a move back to green, green on the sweep formation. Now we were we were packing the box and they went wide right. They got a chunk of it back, maybe 10 yards or so, but this is going to bring up a fourth down and about 16, 17 to go for the first. And we that should have been the last play of the first quarter. Unless they can really, well, they're going to line it up and try to get it off before the quarter ends. So they're in hunting formation. And that's the ball, that's the horn to end the first quarter. 8 0. The Pickett Mohawks leading the Hazen Hornets. Watch Mohawk football on YHC. For the fastest, friendliest service around, visit us at Pickett Pharmacy on the Square. We provide free local delivery and curbside service. Additionally, we have competitive pricing, easy prescription transfers, and a free vitamin program. We're locally owned and operated. Come by Pigot Pharmacy today, where our patients are our family. Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant on East Main and Pigot offers the most authentic Mexican food in the area. All of their meals begin with their signature chips and salsa. Their classic entrees are made to order and delivered right to your table. Los Compadres always has fast, friendly service, and to-go orders and lunch specials are always available. There's no better place to gather with friends and family than Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant on East Main in Piggott. And welcome back to Parker Field. Tim Blair and Sean Parker here to bring you the play-by-play tonight as the Piggott Mohawks are hosting the Hazen Hornets in Game 1 of the 2017 football season, one that we hope goes on until... Maybe December. Indeed. The line drive Good punt. Right. Lemons takes the fair catch and sits down with it at about the 24 and uh, did the smart thing. I don't think letting that one go after the roll they got last time. No, you field it, it doesn't roll. <laughs> hey, we'd like to thank cost, Custom Car Care, Mark Howell, who's been in business, the same location to pick it for nearly 30 years at 788 East Main Street, with full detailing and auto sales, too. If you want your car to look, feel, smell like new again, call Mark Howell at Custom Car Care, 870-598-2571. Right, another supporter of Bullhawk Sports, and appreciate him and all the folks that make this possible. And we encourage you to stay with us uh, throughout the season. Like I said, we'll be panning things out, hopefully right on into the month of December. Spot the football at the 24, Tim. There's that spin move out of Gossett, gives it right up the middle. My goodness. Johnny Football has had, to, had a lot of carries already early. Looks like Jackson Shellman makes the stop. Yeah, he was but on the bottom. I don't know if he <laughs> made the tackle or if he got in the way. He's the one that got fell on, let's put it that way. But uh, good job there of uh, Jackson Shellman. Sometimes with the linemen, I'm not sure. You were, you were a tight end. I was a lineman. They tell you, get low, get as low as you can. In fact, just fall down <laughs> and take your guy with you especially on the goal line situation. Gunner Shaw is Shaw trying, to get, ha- trying to get out of the trouble, and he's going to be uh, caught for a loss, yeah. big loss. That one was kind of blowing up from the word go. Uh, the Hazen Hornets did a good job. You know, they have a coach that's been there for a long time. They're not going to make stupid mistakes. They're, they're going to, you know, do the right things, do the fundamentals. You string the rush out. You string out that, that jet sweep. They can only go so far. There's a sideline over there. Eventually, it's like going the baseline in basketball. There's only so far they can go. You take them as far as you can go with them. Well, the Mohawks are going to send two in split, one to each side. Two-man backfield, a little something to show the uh, folks looking at tape, I'm sure. Every once in a while, they'll show a little something. That was Buchanan, and he was wrapped up pretty quick on that in the two-man backfield. Mohawks are going to be forced to punt again. Yeah, Gossett comes off and others as the punting team comes in. And this time, uh, not much wind right now. We did have a little bit of a north wind earlier, but it's died down. The uh, the flag in the north end of the football field uh, lying limp right now. So let's see if, we, if uh, the guy they call Slim can get That's a hold a of another one. That's a substitution infraction. They broke the huddle with 12 guys, and one of them Sent ran off one the field. Off. Oh, well, that's going to be very head. effective again. Going to be down 
Near the 45, 46. We were look, like, looked like Shaw was the first man down there on the uh, on the change of possession. We'd like to uh, thank Dan Gossett Real Estate at 420 East Main Street in Pickett. Dan or Daniel Gossett, if you're looking for a home or a place for your business to operate, call or visit Dan Gossett Real Estate. Proud sponsors of Mohawk Athletics. It's 870-598-5555. And also Mohawk Mini Storage, Rodney and Kim Rouse. If you need a place to store your things or a way to get them there, call 870-598-7941. Mohawk Mini Storage in Piggott. We appreciate them being a part of this, and we appreciate the Clay County Times Democrat for letting me be a part of it. We appreciate Pickett State Bank for all they do. Great time over at the uh, tailgating party this evening. Indeed, and you talk about crowded. They were here early, <laughs> and they enjoyed it. A lot, of, a lot of burgers cooked and a lot of burgers. Uh, oh, oh he got there a, a little bit early on that, and yeah, you knew that he kind of knew it. Lemons was there. Uh, you folks saw it, saw it just as clearly as why I did. It was a heartbeat too soon. But we appreciate Pickett State Bank uh, sponsoring the tailgating. They wanted to do it down in the, uh, well, I guess we would call that the Pine Grove at the south end of the field. Uh, they were worried it was a little bit too wet. Not sure how that's going to go with the next home game, which is going to be Osceola for homecoming on September 22nd. We'll see how that works out. But they'll walk it off against the Mohawks. It'll be a first down for the Hazen Hornets. First time they've enjoyed being in Mohawk territory tonight. So they have an opportunity to uh, get over into the other side of the football field and try to get something going. But uh, Toll rode out. The coverage was there just a little early on the arrival. If he'd have timed that better, it would have been uh, just well, what he, he wanted. If he had caught the football and made a tackle, it wouldn't have been a game. Not much of one anyway, but... And Lemons is a great defensive back. You know, he he's, a, he's electric. He had a couple and of interceptions man. last year. He and I believe Reeves each had two. My goodness, that was strung out well, too. It was. They're, they're showing a, just keeping the fundamentals going. We haven't had a chance to talk about big Nate Mallard down there. Uh, Nate had a chance, I guess, to go to the Racerback game. Yeah, he was in, invited as a prospect. <laughs> as a prospect. As, it's one thing to go to a Racerback game. It's another thing to go as a prospect. And that was pretty cool. I know Doc was talking about it a little bit earlier. And uh, hoping to get another invite to go maybe when they're playing in Fayetteville instead of Little Rock. Well, you know, uh, we haven't had very many state champions in Pickett High School, but Nate is one. He He's is. The state shot put champion of 3A in 2016-17. Right. There's and a timeout on the field. Like be called out by the Hazen Hornets. Timeout on the field, 8-zip. The Mohawks lead it, 8.51 to go till the halftime break here on YHC. All right, welcome back to Parker Field, the Mohawks and the Hornets here in non-conference play to begin the 2017 campaign. The Hornets with a uh, second down, a long nine. You know, Tim, the Mohawks are going to take on non-conference opponent Portageville, Missouri next week. It'll be week four in, Miz in Missouri and only week right. two in Arkansas. Right. Oh, and they, I believe they pulled somebody off there. Or they, uh, think they, I think that's going against the Mohawks, but let's see if there was some movement. Nope, there was some movement yeah, on they, the interior line. Yeah, it, there's a fine line between drawing them off and just making that little bit of a move. I thought that Coach Hendricks last night in the junior high game, he knew how fired up the Mohawks were and that one hard count. He just saved that hard count until he needed four yards. It, it was worked, well timed. It worked perfect. But, of course, in a 36-6 win, uh, didn't have a lot to do with the outcome. But he's got a pretty good bunch down there. They're just going to get better as they go. There's a handoff right up the left side. I'll tell you what, he just squirted through and got that five yards back. Look like it. I thought – first that they had him right there at the line of scrimmage but the lead blocker went down allowing the running back to make his way on up there to make it third and about seven like I said uh, Hayden Lemons had to come up from a safety spot you know the Mohawks don't play their D-backs very deep you know if you're playing the spread they, they will give you some cushion but I'll tell you what when you've got two tights and everybody in the backfield they're going to push them all up close. And yeah. Look at that tight formation on. they've got there. They've got everybody in a box. I mean, Hazen, there wasn't eight yards across that spread, it looked like. Every kid was in a box. But Mohawks stack them up, fourth yeah. down. Again. 
Hey, we also need to uh, offer congratulations to Emily Seagrave. She broke the record for singles wins in tennis for the Lady Mohawk tennis team. So Emily Seagraves, congratulations to her. Uh, we'll have details on that coming up in next week's edition of the paper. You know, it, a lot's going on right now. We've got the golf team doing pretty well, and a couple of those kids are out there as well. Uh, Isaac Langley, Trey Gossett and such. Uh, the tennis team, the volleyball team has been in action. Uh, with our football teams getting underway, we've got a lot going on with Mohawk sports. And you can't say enough also about the marching Mohawk band, the pride of Clay County. Well, the play clock was winding down, and Hazen had to take a timeout. They're second of the uh, first half, and with a break, we'll take a timeout. Be back with more here on YHC. The area's fastest internet just got faster. Introducing 100 Meg Internet, now available from New Wave. With 100 Meg, there's nothing you can't do. Browse better, stream more, power every device. This is lightning fast internet designed to fit your family's needs. It's brand new and it's the fastest game in town. Get 100 Meg Internet from New Wave, your local provider of the speed you need. Call 1-888-8-NEW-WAVE today. All right, following the timeout by the Hazen Hornets, their second of the first half. They'll line up on fourth down. They got a man back, but it, I believe that this time they're going to try to go for it. I mean, this is non-conference play. You want to try out situations that you're going to be facing in conference play. And goes oh. back. It looks like a halfback pass. Got a man down, and, and great job to step in front and pull it down. Who was it, Slim? Yeah. Quentin Reeves yeah. with the interception for the Mohawks. He played it perfectly, stepped in front, pulled they, it down. Had great position, great position. They Mohawks have, have worked on that and worked on that. And you can thank a lot there. Class of 2009, I believe Daniel Baldwin has been working with the DBs, mm -hmm. and it shows. I've had a chance to come out, and I know you have too, to watch them, and they have really worked on that, and it, and it shows. And as the season goes on, it's going to become even more important. Ball goes over to the Mohawks. They're going to try to build on an eight-point lead here, 7.20 to go first half. Coming up at halftime, we'll see if we can get some scores from around the area. We've got some other uh, teams in action in non-conference play here in week one. Looks like Cade straight yeah. ahead. Cade Lord, digging. Carrying him. Cade starts digging. I mean, you, we've seen, I've, I've been in the old, the PMAC, the uh, Pickett Mohawk Athletic Complex, and seen these guys working on the weight equipment. Will, the, you, will you try to tackle a stronger uh, running back in the 3-3-A? Three, three is there a stronger one? I don't know of one. Uh, we may have graduated one last year that was pretty salty, the Harvard kid. But, yeah, it's just you might as well be trying to tackle that goal post. Now the, a little well, misdirection. They, yeah, they faked it one work. way, and that didn't work, and we have a flag. We got up. a penalty. I think General, we got a face mask right there. Really? I, it, yeah. I wasn't sure if that or we got one of our guys on well, the hold over on that side because it's that situation where – Trying to protect yeah, your running right, back. Yeah. They got us right there. It's going to be half the distance. Well, they may not even take this one. They caught him for a loss, so they're probably going to decline this and force third down, down along. That's how you do it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> In that area, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get an offensive lineman that's grabbed somebody or a running back. The D-line got their hand in their face. Right. And that's exactly what's going to happen. It'll be third and eight as they decline the penalty, take the loss, and loss it down. All right, Mohawks back. Not quite in the uh, shadow of their own goalpost, but pretty deep in their own territory. Now they're yeah, going to give it to Cade. He only got about a yard. Yeah, that dive left, or the left blast, I guess they might call it. And it looks like... Uh, we're going to have Reeves come back out and punt again. You're going to punt. We'd like to thank Pickett Family Medical Clinic, Pickett Mohawks Football, and YHC TV is brought to you by the Pickett Family Medical Clinic on West Jackson Street in Pickett. It's now affiliated with St. Bernard's Medical Center. We wish the Mohawks the best of luck. Their providers, Drs. Dennis Blake, Greg Mallard, Advanced Nurses Brandy Pace and Megan Rappler, are committed to providing excellent service for your medical need. Call for appointments, 598-2236. From his goal line, or about the one or two, Quentin Reeves takes the snap. Good what was Protection. a great snap. Man. He drilled it. Good That's roll. That's going to be very effective. Excellent. Yes, sir. 
They can't three, do anything eight. of that. Lemons down to down it. I believe Gunnar Shaw was at uh, Tillman down with him. But Rashid Mills didn't have a chance at all to get a hold of that one. About 46 yards on the net. That'll flip the field, won't it? A punting team, a punting game is so important. It only really, though, affects you if you don't have one. Oh, indeed. Clay County Abstract brings you Mohawk Football and White CTV. Van Witten and his staff for true professionals for your real estate transactions, including title searches, insurance, and closings. Contact Clay County Abstract on Square and Pickett, 870-598-5207. And here come the Hornets again. They got guys, they got a wing on the left side, two wide left, one wide right, out of the pistol, go out the, the flat. Oh, that was an ill ill-advised pass. I think I would have pulled that down. There were red, well, gray jerseys. There were Mohawk jerseys Mohawk out there, and we got a Mohawk down. Somebody, That's Dylan Bellers, number 22. Looks like he's cramped up a little. Bellers, who lines up the defensive end and also plays tight end for the Tribe. He'll be coming to the sideline. And... Saw a little bit of that last night. It wasn't quite as bad with the uh, with the rain we had, but it was kind of humid. We'll kind of check now and see how this goes. Uh, he might have got his ankle stepped on, though. Could have been that, too. It's like Doc Mallard's going to tend to him, and here come the Hornets on second and well, long. They lost six yards. They got a man Mason, down. Mason Mason Shaw was down. Sack. Told misses, oh. and finally he's hit and dropped. He, he might have, but that Fuller was, was there to finish it off. That's a big kid. And a good job there by Gunnar Shaw. He had Rasheed Mills blanketed again. They talked about it in practice, the coverage sack. Don't give the quarterback anywhere to go. You give your linemen all kinds of time. Your linemen, your linebackers, your defensive ends, they can crash in on them then. But covering that wide receiver, staying with your coverage, it's something they've worked a lot on this year because they know, especially when they start playing some of the schools later in the year and into the postseason, they're going to see a lot of that. Splits to both sides. They're going to look downfield, throwing off his back foot. That's a duck. That's another short one, way short. Now Good job had, again as the double well, team out there, actually, on that on that time for the Mohawks. Toll ended up on his back courtesy of Alex Gibson, number 52, who checked in. Uh, Ajon Green was the intended receiver. He was doubled up out there. I believe Gossett and is it, I think it's Reeves over there on that far side that was uh, covering the receiver on that. So it's bringing up a fourth down, almost 20. I got to be what, it's about 19 to go for the first. It certainly is, Tim. It's uh, 18, 19 yards to go for the first down. They're in uh, punt formation once again. And it looks like Shaw standing back at his 40. Oh, a little bit of a Hayden weak Lemons snap, but a good kick. It was Lemons that pulls it down. Ball goes back over to the Mohawks with 3.58 to play in the first half. 8 nothing. Pick it over Hazen here on YHC. All right, we're back as the Mohawks take over following the punt by the Hazen Hornets. Got that little wing on the right side, and Lane Buchanan just blows the middle up for a few yards. Following the block of Boyd and, oh, who was leading the way there for the Mohawks? Yeah, Alex Gibson, number 52, the yeah, center, Gibson. cleared the lane. We'd like to thank Pigot Pharmacy for the fastest, friendliest experience around. Visit them on the square. They provide free local delivery, curbside service, competitive pricing, easy prescription transfer, and free vitamin programs. Locally owned and operated Pickett Pharmacy where our patients are our family. All right, here we go. Second down and six. A little bit of a different look, and they go dive left side. That was Tillman on the carry. Mason's going to be short of the first down by about a yard. Bring up a third and short from just inside the Mohawk 45-yard line. And we're inside three minutes to go in the first half. It's a, I'm sure that uh, Coach Harrell would like to have a, a little bit more of a cushion here at the halftime break, but uh, good to have that touchdown. Of course, the uh, the Mohawks getting the ball early, uh, but unable to capitalize since then. Right up the, oh, right there, we the go. there we go. 
Looks like Gunner going to the house. Five chases, five. Touchdown. Tim, that's the thing. When you stack the box and you have 10 men in the box, if one gets loose, it is a big gainer. And that was a big gainer. It was Gunner Shaw, wasn't it? Yeah, Gunner Shaw, number five. He is a, just a, a magnet for touchdowns. He has a way, a nose for the end zone. And Shaw got in. Oh, I'm saying that one was, uh, we may have to check on how long that one was. I lost the yard marker, Tim. Yeah. Oh, they took off on us too quick. That's all right. We'll check on that. They're going to line up for the two-point conversion now. The Mohawks say they're still short a man. And like they, have to they're down the to 17 on the, on the clock. They've got enough time to get it off. 11 seconds now, so they'll be able to get that one off. Uh, line up. Same formation. Yeah, he's in easily. And Jones takes it in for the deuce to make it a 16 to nothing ball game with 234 to go in the first half of play. We'd like to thank Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant, offering the most authentic Mexican food in the area. Their classic entrees are made to order and delivered right to your table. Los Compadres always has fast and friendly service and to-go orders, and lunch specials are always available. There's no better place to gather with friends and family than Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant at 648 East Main in Piggott. Well, just while we ordered up, we were wanting a little bit more of a cushion for the halftime break, and we got just that with uh, Gunnar Shaw. Coach Harold talked about the fact that he felt there were probably five to six guys that could be 1,000-yard rushers. I say the talent, the ability is there. I'll tell you what makes it not just the ability of those backs, but the Mohawk offensive line is talented, big, and strong. Right. And those are good factors to have in your offensive line. They're also experienced. They're gelled. That's, this is a group that's basically been together for a while. They did some moving around since last year as the kickoff goes deep. Down the middle is going to be returned. 22 with the ball and some running room. He is but still on he's his got feet. men in front of him as he's back to midfield. Oh, we got a collar. flag. Yeah, either horse collar on. But you're going to, you'll take Terrell that. Penn. Terrell Penn brings it all the way back out to midfield, but I think they're going to tack 15 onto that. Either face mask or horse collar, but they saved the touchdown, so I'm not really sure that uh, you can fault them for that. Face mask. They'll, they'll tack about 15 yards on that. Very good return, but of course we know Hazen has some speed. As mentioned, they've, they've uh, got a lot of these players. You see these sophomores or kids that played on a, an 8-0 team last year, won the district championship, conference championship there in 2A6, and, uh, and it's a fairly decent conference down there. Got some pretty good teams, so... Uh, well, our junior Mohawks a year ago scrimmaged that unknown then, <laughs> soon to be conference mm -hmm. champions, and they looked like it. All right, they're going to spot the football inside the 30 at the 29, Tim. All right, here we go. Mohawk crowd on their feet. There's the rush, and a great job of the defense getting through an oh. all-over toll. I'll tell you what, Dylan Bellers, Bellers is, is back. back. Yep. Lane Buchanan. Big Nate Mallard helped string the play out and a they're, host of Mohawks on that stop. They're not inside the 30 anymore. Right, you know, now they're outside the 30. Loss of about one and a half, almost two yards on that play. As we're getting down to under two minutes to play here in the first half. Hazen looking to the sideline. They're gonna have to go in at halftime and try to draw up something different, but I'm not sure that there's anything they can game plan that the Mohawks can't address. And they're going to send four receivers in the set. Out of the pistol, yeah, wing. before the snap. There's movement there. He looked out to Weems in the flat, but I'm not sure if he was his primary receiver. We'll, we see a lot of that, and it's something that a lot of teams have used against us in the past. Just the flare pass out in the flat, get them into space, and let them try to beat our defensive backs. We've worked on that, though. We're better at that now. I think we showed that last year in the in several of the wins. And even though it was a loss, some of these kids did a lot of growing up in that Prescott game. Oh, indeed. 
and they also learned you don't quit, and they didn't quit. And they left there with a lot of res- the Prescott kids had a lot of respect for them. Tall's going to be in the pistol. There's three receivers in the set that are out, one to the left, and he is flushed out on oh. the back foot. That's Oh, it's caught somehow. And Nate Mallard was up in his face. Oh, my goodness. And touchdown. The Mohawks had that defense so well. And that was, again, once they got into space, he found some running room. Tall absolutely threw that thing off his back foot and didn't know what was going to happen. And, Nate, and Nate's got a, a long reach on him. He was bearing down on him, hand up in the air. But of course, they're about the same height. So, uh, touchdown, Hazen. One thirteen to go, first half. Well, the Mohawks will get the football to start the second half as they deferred. and They won the toss and deferred. But my goodness, you didn't expect that to happen right there. Now it came from about the 32-yard line. They bring him in tight now for the two-point conversion. 21 straight ahead. He stood up. No. Nope. Oh. And he did get in on there was a extra delayed call. effort. They, a very delayed call. Two-point conversion's good to make it a 16-date game with 1.13 to play in the first half. You're watching Mohawk football on White C. Say hello to the Internet of Tomorrow. Compelling, absorbing, all-encompassing. Delivered to your home at 100 megabits per second. Now that's fast, really fast. All so that you can do a little of this, this, and a whole lot of this. With none of that. Need speed? Welcome to the Internet of Tomorrow. Today. Get 100 meg internet from New Wave Communications for as low as $69.99 a month for the first 12 months. Save even more when you bundle. Call today. All right, we're back at Parker Field, 16 to 8. The score, the Mohawks leading the Hazen Hornets here in the first game. And this is, as Sean Parker pointed out, the first kickoff for the Hornets. And it's going to be returned. In fact, a little bit of a broken play, and we got some running room going. We got a hole down the sideline. Great job and great return. And that was Johnny Johnny. Football, John Jones, showing not only a little bit of speed, but some great moves there to get it into Hornet territory at the 49-yard line of Hazen. They'll have a minute three to play with here, and let's see if uh, Coach Michael Harrell might let Trey Gossett uh, air one out. If he's going to take this eight-point lead into the uh, locker room for the half. And here they come. They're ready. I know we play a lot of guys both ways, but it looks like Hazen's going to have more of that going on. They don't have many guys over on that far sideline. There's Shaw again. Oh. And there's Shaw. And he almost broke that one. He, he took that one. 19 yards down to the 30. Oh, we got a little. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. The might be in trouble. shoving. I'm not sure who was uh, the one who instituted that or if it's going to go both ways. We got a couple of players. I know that uh, Corey Fuller was down there following. Let's wait and see what the officials have to say about it. They're going to hash it out. Send us a signal. Expect a little bit of that, especially in the early season. Yeah, they're going to offset. Offset. They're going to get them both of them. So the ball doesn't move. So, th- but what you don't want to get two. No, and since it's dead ball, the Mohawks will get the yardage. But you know, if that that been live, that would offset. We play that over again, and that yep. 18 yard gain. I thought it was 19. They spotted it. Bad spot. Um, would have been for not. What I'm saying is, no matter what happens to you, Dana, you can't retaliate. No. No, and that's one thing that they have to learn because there will be times in the future where they'll be doing everything they can to get them to retaliate. Well, 58 seconds left on the first half clock. The Mohawks have a first and 10 at the Hornet 32. It'll be right side. Oh, he's got one to beat. Little juke step. Good job. Oh. Boy, he threw him down on his head. Tried to toss him down, but a good gainer once again. The Mohawks are right back at it. You know, the John, Mohawks two-minute two offense, you know what it is? What? The same thing as their 10-minute offense. That's right. Line up and go, line up and go. John Jones takes it down deep. Mohawks are lined up. They want to hit quick. Blast right. 
He's going to be short. And he's dropped over there just short of the goal line. See where the spot of the football is. They're going to stop the clock while they talk about it a little bit. No, it's running. No. Nope. Yeah, Coach Harrell's turning around wanting to know why the clock is running. You know, there were about eight seconds that came off the clock while they were deciding what to do. So let's see what the uh, Moss can do now. Looks like they're looking at a first and goal, according to the uh, chain gang over there. Well, there's a lot of confusion, Tim. And it seems to be. They don't even know where to spot the football, and I'm not sure why. Now they're going to go ahead and walk it down to about the two-yard line and mark it right there. There's a couple of Hazen coaches over there that have the same question. What's going on? They've come over to uh, talk with Coach Michael Harrell. You see Coach Walter Rao down on the sideline. We'll be losing him for a few games. I'm not sure exactly how many, but of course he's a member of the National Guard. He's been called to duty to go to Texas and help with uh, Hurricane Harvey. We're lucky to have him here tonight. He recently promoted to captain. We're proud of him. We are. Here we go. Touchdown, Mohawks. I'm not even sure who had the football on that one. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Gossett still has it. Gossett with the keeper. Uh, oftentimes, yeah. in the Mohawk offense, the quarterback has an option to audible. If he sees a, nobody over the center, he right. can audible and go to it. And the Mohawks answer. Right. And he's got a good blocker there in that center position, too. So the Bohawks answer the uh, Hazen touchdown with one of their own here as time runs down in the first half of play. 17 seconds to go till the first half. And the two-point conversion now out of the T formation, or the flex T, if you want to call it that. Straight ahead. Looks like Lane Buchanan. It is. Lane Buchanan, fullback, with the two-point conversion. Extend the lead to 24 to 8. You're watching Mohawk football on White CTV. All right, we're back at Parker Field. We we'll begin the 40th season for this whole field, and it has never looked better. I can tell you that. I've been here for a lot of those seasons, it seems like. And uh, we don't have that crest out there in the middle of the bald spot that we had for many years. Uh, We've got the natural turf. It feels, if you haven't been out there, it's like a cushion. Little dribbler, it's not going to go the 10 yards, so they'll have an opportunity here to uh, throw the flag on them or take the ball where it's spotted, I guess. Yeah, and then also no time runs off the clock there. Right, it wasn't touched. Clock doesn't start, so nothing burns off. I'm not really sure with 17 seconds and an arm on that quarterback like they have. I may have chosen to kick deep. We'll see if it ends up uh, having any impact on the first half score. Now the officials are talking about it, spotting the football. Well, there's no discussion, and the ball is spotted right there. Where it, It's inside Mohawk territory right around the 49. And we've got 17 ticks on the clock. Of course, these Mohawks will be on the road next week at Portageville, Missouri, to take on the Bulldogs in non-conference out-of-state play. Following week, we'll be down at Rector for the uh, rivalry game with the Cougars. Week after that, back here for homecoming as the Osceola Seminole come to town in what should prove to be a very pivotal conference game. They're all important in that tough, tough 3 3 8. Shotgun formation alone in the backfield is Joel. He's got wings on both sides. Two to the right, puts one up, caught. Waylaid there. It'll be a first down. Bellers is the first, and looks like Lemons. But the reception made by the Hornets is going to be enough for the first down. That hung up in the air, and I just waited for a Mohawk to make a break on it. Now, they burned two timeouts early in this half, so their options are not quite as much as they should be. Again, low in the backfield, the quarterback takes the snap. He's back. Here comes the big rush, and... The same results, catching the ball in front of the defensive backs, and that was the end of the half. Time ran out while the uh, receiver was running around trying to find some extra yardage, so 
We have reached the halftime intermission at Parker Field in game one of the 2017 campaign. The Pigot Mohawks leading the Hazen Hornets 24 to eight here on YHC. Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant on East Main and Pigot offers the most authentic Mexican food in the area. All of their meals begin with their signature chips and salsa. Their classic entrees are made to order and delivered right to your table. Los Compadres always has fast, friendly service, and to-go orders and lunch specials are always available. There's no better place to gather with friends and family than Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant on East Main in Pigot. For the fastest, friendliest service around, visit us at Pigot Pharmacy on the Square. We provide free local delivery and curbside service. Additionally, we have competitive pricing, easy prescription transfers, and a free vitamin program. We're locally owned and operated. Come by Pigot Pharmacy today, where our patients are our family. Pigot, Arkansas. Tim Blair and Sean Parker bring you the play-by-play -play this evening as the Pigot Mohawks open the 2017 campaign, and I don't like to see that. Devin Riley came out early. He's still out, and he seems to be having a lot of problems with, uh, looks to be the right knee or leg, getting some help back out onto the field, but uh, starting lineman down. Not exactly what you want to see. Now, of course, the Mohawks defer to believe in the first half they'll have the option here to begin the second half of play with a 24-8 to eight lead. You know, that's your uh, senior offensive tackle, and he's limping around. You know, uh, he's a big kid and a big part of this. The Mohawks, the cupboard's not bare. No. But Devin's been a big part of this uh, seasoned, experienced offensive line. And he can also play some defense. He sure can. Plug a hole in a big way. And uh, they're going to have to see the extent of that, but just hate to see a kid injured, especially early in the season. Now the uh, captains will meet at midfield again to decide the directions and so forth. Let's tell you how we got to this point. The Mohawks actually kicked off, but they got a turnover deep in Hazen territory. Kane well, Harrell made them pay, wasn't it? They fumbled the kickoff so fumbled and didn't run a play. <laughs> And the Mohawks had the football deep in their territory, but I'm sorry, Tim, go right ahead. Yeah, Kate Harrell made them pay with a one-yard touchdown with 10.31 to go in the first quarter. John Jones had the two-point conversion to make it 8-0. Uh, next score came with 2.34 to go. Actually, you believe that was also in the uh, first quarter. Gunnar Shaw broke loose on a long touchdown run. Jones had the two-point conversion to make it 16-zip. And then with uh, time running down, a uh, long pass getting through, and Hazen taking it to the house, scoring the touchdown, getting the two-point conversion to make it 16-8. to Then Gossett scored with just 17 seconds left in the first half on the quarterback keeper. Lane Buchanan added the two-point conversion to make it 24-8 to at intermission here at Parker Field as the Mohawks and the Hornets return for third-quarter play. So we're checking some other scores from around the region here, and... Uh, See what's going on with some of these non-conference games that are taking place around the uh, state of Arkansas and involving some, of course, our regional teams. And we've been trying to keep an eye on some of those. And uh, Tim, Rivercrest has a 21-0 lead over Paragould a year ago that went the other way. That's right. It was a, a loss on them. Uh, Truman's beating Hoxie 21 to nothing. Now, you saw Truman. So that kind of gives you a little idea about where uh, Hoxie stacks up this year. Somebody we're going to see later in the season, I believe, in about week seven. You know, got some other teams in action around the area. We'll talk about that as those scores come in. A lot of them are, are reaching the halftime break now, as we have. Corning and Melbourne, no score. Salem trailing Mountain View, 7-6. That's a step up for them. Newport leading Gosnell, 7-zip at the halftime break. Well, 3A Osceola has a 7-0 lead early over 5A Blyville. And we're ready to get this one underway. Uh, their second kick is a short, or a rather a low one. It will be fielded. Buchanan back there, and he comes out to about the 33-yard line. That's where the Mohawks will take over first and 10. And junior quarterback Trey Gossett will come out and line up with the offense. Most of the night, it's been the usual. Cade Harrell, John Jones, and Lane Buchanan in the backfield for the Tribe. Buchanan returns now to line up in that fullback spot. It's been a, a 
very physical game in the first half, and we don't expect anything different here in the second half of play after both these teams have made adjustments at intermission. Two men in the backfield. Looks like Jones' right side on the blast. That pile rolled backwards, and one of the Hazen players got rolled up on his leg, and he's still down, but they're picking him up, and he's shaking it off. That's, that is uh, Toll, wasn't it? No, that's number oh. 61. Oh, there he is. Yep, I see him. But that pile started going backwards. Our roster is not necessarily yep. complete. But that's Shellman, Jackson Shellman. It's hard to read, too, in this slide. <laughs> indeed, indeed it is. But Jones is going to get about two. It's going to be second and eight. There's a carry up the middle, and that's Shaw. Tried to hit the same play that scored the touchdown earlier. That time, uh, one of the linebackers got a hold of him, held on long enough that he got help, which is basically the best you can do sometimes, especially when somebody as quick as Gunner hits the hole. If you can get a hold of him, stand him up, get some help, it looks like he's coming to the sideline now. Down there with uh, Lemons and Tillman. Well, it's going to be third down for the Mohawks. They come up two tight ends again in the tee. No, wait, hold on. We've got nope. a little change here. we got somebody yeah, in the gonna, slot. We're going to go slot on the left side. They were going slot right while ago. Dive straight ahead, though. And there's no room because the box was stacked. Gossa comes to the sideline, and Quentin Reeves will come in to punt the football away, apparently. As the uh, punting team comes on for the Tribe. So they get the football to begin the second half, but can't capitalize, and really can't even burn up that much time. So the ball goes back to the Hornets, or should, as uh, we have a fourth down and just over five, maybe just over five yards to go for the first. So far, the Pigott punt team has been very effective. Good snap. That's the senior, Kate Harrell. Another good kick. Reese on the 25. And it was oh, it's bubble. Bubble and ball on the ground. Mohawks are on it, and I think Hazen grabbed the ball. Yeah, Hazen, Hazen come up with it. They recovered it. They say those they are, are the are still plays. fighting over it, though. I don't think they haven't made a signal yet. But those, those are the plays that give coaches gray hair. He could have either tried. He could have caught it or let it go. He didn't do either one. They still have yet to make. There's a signal, finally. So it is Hazen football, first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. As we're here in the third quarter of play, game one of the 2017 campaign. Be at Portageville next week at Rector in week three. We don't have any official stats, Tim, but the Hornet offense has had several negative negative yardage plays, and there's another one. Yeah, uh, they, they did the pitch back. Quarterback turned to try to catch the trailing man and, and provide a block. It fell apart pretty quick, but like I said, that's on that left side. Nate Mallard crashes in. He takes a couple of guys out, as well as substitutions uh, a little bit here, as uh, looks like McCann is going to come to the sideline. Didn't see who went in for him. Regan Mayberry, number 11, is in the game. Right. He's a, a senior that has really built up his body and played hard. And he, Works hard, and look at they're going to spread it out again. Four receivers in the set, two to each side. Tolls in the pistol. He's going to fake it, and he's going to get wrapped up. Yeah, he didn't get back to the he line. He faked the handoff to the wingman beside him, and then tried to tuck it and follow his right guard. And there was very little running room there. Linebackers crashed in, stayed at home. Of course, we're going to see a lot of this spread stuff. They don't want the Mohawks with those three linebackers in the box. If they're going to try to run up the middle, they're going to have to try to spread the field. We know that. These guys have uh, they've worked on the film, and they know what they're going to try to do. So far, the Mohawks have done a good job about uh, just maintaining. Uh, he did. He the pistol up a looked couple. like the back moved a little early, but the pitch is going to be well short of the first down. We're going to take a minute to thank uh, Piggott Realty, Mike and Pat Patterson, for residential, commercial, or agricultural real estate anywhere in Clay County and beyond. Let Mike and Pat serve you. They've been serving the area for many, many years. 870-598-3142. There is a player down. We have a Hornet down on the field, as you folks watching can see. He he came in there, he took a shot. His helmet's off, but I think they pulled it off. Uh, I'm not really sure. He's 
when you're slapping the ground, that's usually not a head injury. That usually indicates that he has maybe a lower body injury. But while we have a timeout on the field for the injury, we'll take a timeout. Be back with more in a moment here on YHC. At Ag Explore, we're farmers too. So we know that farming's never been a nine to five job. Just like the farmer, we work overtime to bring you whatever it takes. Solutions like Enzone help you retain 47% more nitrogen with an overall average increase of 12 bushels per acre. Imagine what Enzone can do for you. Ag Explore. We're back, and the uh, injured player, Darrell Penn, is being helped to the sideline. We're pretty sure he was just a cramp. They started stretching him out a little bit there. It's not a hot night, but it's been a pretty warm day, and uh, we may see a little bit of that as this game goes on. The Mohawks are in good shape. I came up sometimes during the heat of the summer. Coach Hearn's in that gym with those guys. They worked it like a sweat box sometimes. I can't say everybody had that work uh, ethic that they had, but uh, this is the time here in the second half when we'll find out in these early September games. Mohawks put a shift on. Look at that formation. They set to punt, get it down. That's going to be returnable to Yep, oh. Lemon slips. Oh, and he lets it and roll he down let inside a the 15. Big roll all the way down to about the 12, 13 yard line, and that is where the Mohawks will take over first and 10. Thanks to Daryl and Ellen Dalton at Pumpkin Hollow. It's Pumpkin Hollow time. The season opens September 16th. Since 1993, it's the fall attraction that draws guests from all over the country. They've got all kinds of attractions. Horror in the Hollow, Bubba's Butcher Barn, Zombie Paintball, Forest to Fright, and now the Pumpkin Zip Line. Plan a field trip, party, or just go and enjoy. 671 County Road 336 in Pickett. 870-598-3568 or inquire at pumpkinhollow.com. Of course, the Daltons, they were chosen as the Clay County Farm Family of the Year. And I had a chance to go out there. It's, it's a really neat operation, even in the summertime. And uh, they have a new attraction that uh, they say is not quite as gory. They say it's a little bit more about what goes bump in the night. Well, the Mohawks are going bump over <laughs> the left side. And standing it up, Kate Harrell again just kind of pounding. And I can guarantee you, come fourth quarter, the last thing those Hazen Hornets are going to want to see are Kate Harrell, Lane Buchanan, and John Jones hitting the middle. That's the time when you do stick Gunner Shaw, and he's coming on into the game right now. So Shaw in, see if they call his number. 7.27 to go in the third quarter. The Mohawks enjoying a 24-8 lead. Last year it was a 20-6 win down at... Hornet Field in Hazen. Again, this non-conference football, it's hard to find opponents to play non-conference football. There's a keeper by Gossett, and he's going to be wrapped up over the 20. He's standing up, but he did a good job of holding on to the football. He's going to be short of the first down by several yards. He'll bring up a third, and I believe about three, maybe, no, he got close to about a yard. Let's call it third and one. So the junior quarterback with the keeper and then doing a good job of wrapping it up. He's got those golf muscles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> i tell you what, Tim, I want you to take a look at the Hornet defense and the body language you're seeing out there. Yep. You're seeing them holding on to their knees. They're bent over a little bit. You're not seeing that on the Mohawk side. No. Well, you you have to know, too. They, they start fourth quarter, you got to start thinking about that bus ride. <laughs> Blast right. Oh, going to be close. I don't think he got it. He's going to be just shy. But well, let's see what he does. I believe he'll probably go for, I don't know, it's a 24-8 to eight lead. They've, had, they've been effective punting the football tonight. Yeah, you've got a good punting game, but he's already seen that, and Buchanan is coming in, and I think that means here comes Lane Buchanan. Is that Tillman coming to the sideline or Shaw? One of the – That was Tillman that Tillman just came coming off out. the field. Lane Buchanan and the Mohawk crowd getting behind them on fourth down in about two feet. They've got ten men in the box. They give it to Harold. He goes outside. He breaks the tackle. He cuts him back inside. Still oh, on his feet. He's going clear. to the house. It's coming back. He's got. Oh, it's there's a flag back. on it's the play. Back. It is going and to come back. And he takes it to the end zone. We have a man down. I mean, laid out. I didn't see what happened trailing the play. We have a Mohawk 
And this Boyd, I believe, getting up really gingerly down there. It is, but there's, yep. a, there's a clip against the Mohawks. There's a clip on us. And huh? it wasn't necessary, Tim. The play was behind them, and there came a, a block look, in the back, and it just didn't have to happen. Look at Toll. Got a little bit of a gimpy hornet out there, too, after making the chase. Cade showed that he's got some speed for a guy of his size right there. The DB couldn't catch him. You gave him another 30 yards, he might have. But that's going to come back, and it's going to hurt the Mohawks. That's the big one, too. That's not a block in the back. That, Well, they used to call it a clip. Right. But it is – that's a big play. It was fourth down and one. Now it's fourth – down. look, our chain gang, uh, they left without being <laughs> – So they're resetting them. So what is the – are they giving us a first and 30? What? I don't know what the call is on that. It was, I don't think that the chain should have moved with us. It was from the spot, Tim. From the spot of the football. It was from the spot, okay. so they, uh, the spot of the infraction. From the spot, okay. So they got the first down, but it eliminates Called the touchdown. That. Basically the same play, only he cuts it inside this time. Tim, that's one thing. You've got to have that football IQ, that knowledge to know that when um, the play's behind you, there's no need to block in the back. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to thank Mark Howe at Custom Car Care at 788 East Main and Pickett. Mark's been in business for the same location for nearly 30 years with full detailing and auto sales, too. If you want your car to look, feel, and smell like new again, call Mark Howe at Custom Car Care, 870-598-2571. Lots of cramping up going on out. Yeah, we've got another player down for for the Hornets. Looks like he's he's patting the left side. So uh, we've got another injury timeout. Let's go ahead and take a break and be back with more in a moment right here on YHC. The area's fastest internet just got faster. Introducing 100 Meg Internet, now available from New Wave. With 100 Meg, there's nothing you can't do. Browse better, stream more, power every device. This is lightning fast internet designed to fit your family's needs. It's brand new and it's the fastest game in town. Get 100 Meg Internet from New Wave, your local provider of the speed you need. Call 1-888-8-NEW-WAVE today. All right, we're back at Parker Field, and uh, Penn was stretched and removed once again, so I'm not sure if we'll see him back. That's twice he's cramped up pretty bad. Well, after that injury timeout, the officials' timeout, it's second down and nine for the Mohawks. Going to spot the football. We'll call it the 24-yard line, Piggott. As they come up the line, and they're going to split Gunnar Shaw to the left, and they've got a man in the slot as well. Two men in the backfield. It's like Harold and Jones, I believe. Oh, he's oh, going he up so and he's open. got him wide open. Oh, oh, my goodness. He had Gunnar Shaw beat his man by two strides at least, stretched for it, but just couldn't get there. We had one man in the pattern, and you know what? He was wide open. He was. He had a step, about a step and a half. I don't think 21 would have had a chance to run him down. We uh, That pass by Gossett, just a little overthrown. Speaking of Gossett, we're going to like to thank Dan Gossett Real Estate. 420 East Main and Pickett, Dan and Daniel Gossett. If you're looking for a home or a place for your business to operate, call or visit Dan Gossett Real Estate. Proud sponsors of Mohawk Athletics, 870-598-5555. Straight ahead, no room. It's going to come up about fourth and eight, isn't it? It sure is. We're going to have a fourth down for the Mohawks again. Probably see Quentin Reeves and the punting team back on. And if you see Dan Gossett or Daniel, just tell them thanks for sponsoring the broadcast. We also appreciate Rodney and Kim Rouse from Mohawk Mini Storage. They've got all kinds of places if you need to store your things. If you got a way to get them there, they can rent you a trailer. They'll help you out. Call 870-598-7941. That's Mohawk Mini Storage and Picket. Raise back to punt for the Tribe. He'll be standing at about his own 13-yard line. Hazen respecting what he's been able to do so far. Good snap, no pressure. Line drive, punt's going to roll. Big roll. One's back there, but too many Mohawks to even think about. It's going to go to about the 36, and that's where the Hazen Hornets will take over first and 10. We'd like to thank the Piggott Family Medical Clinic. 
Pickett Mohawk Football on YHC TV is brought to you by the Pickett Family Medical Clinic at 425 West Jackson. The clinic is affiliated with St. Bernard's Medical Center and wish the Mohawks the best of their luck this season. Their providers are Dr. Dennis Blake, Greg Mallard, advanced nurses Brandy Pace and Megan Rathel are committed to providing excellent service for your medical needs. Call for your next appointment, 870-598-2236. Uh, Doc Mallard, Doc Blake, a couple of hometown boys. It's a snap, fake, told straight ahead. He, he shakes off the first man. He looked like 224 pounds he there. Did. He did. He looked like 6'4", 224 coming through there. Boyd ended up wrapping him up around the legs. Of course, a lot of football will be going on. The Hogs, they notched a big win last night over uh, well, not exactly one of the premier programs in the nation, but uh, they handed out a pretty good whipping down at War Memorial Stadium. Red Wolves are going to get it underway against Nebraska. Probably won't be oh. that same turnout. Oh, my that, goodness. That handoff was almost taken. That's got to be Johnny Jones or he wouldn't be he, helping him up. Uh, he almost got there before the back did. That's got to be Johnny football. He will help them up. I asked him about it. I said, do you have to help him up every time? <laughs> every once in a while you want to leave him laying. He's a fine young man. He's a good young man, good Christian young man. and. And the kind of kids that you want to coach and want to be around, they're a lot of fun to be around. I, I enjoy going down to the to the athletic facility. Looks like uh, Bellers is cramping up, maybe just a little bit again. He's grabbing that. Yeah, he's right replacing a little Elijah bit by Elijah Bellers, his brother. But here, another loss. Lost shot is played. They're going to sling that out oh, there. Oh, it's good timing. I would. Oh no, no they're no, going to say he was there too soon. Uh, I was kind of wondering about that. He, he, it wasn't the timing necessarily, Tim. It's just that he went through him to get to it. Yeah. So they're going to get you I think that. in the wrestling move, that's called a suplex, isn't it, when you just kind of just pick the uh. – <laughs> It's a high, high back to the belly <laughs> uh, Oh, Gordon but the – Gordon uh, reference there. There you go. Atlanta <laughs> wrestling. Or the super suplex. All right. Now, in high school football, pass interference is what they've called. It's a 15-yard penalty, right. whether it's one yard downfield or 99 yeah, it, yards it's downfield. It's not the same, but that, that keeps you from throwing it deep and getting a deep spot, though. So, it's a little different, yes, in high school football. But uh, right now, Hazen is running out of time because they've got about two and a half minutes to go here in the third. They're trailing 24-8. They need a quick score, and that ain't going to get it. That's another another lost yardage play. And I want to tell you. And the uh, Mohawks are just pushing the blockers into the backfield, and now we got another. Looks like somebody coming up grabbing a groin muscle or something there. It uh, doesn't look good, and it's John. Where is it? No, that's Lane. Lane yeah. Buchanan comes to the sideline for well, the Mohawks. Elijah Beller's made a play there. Number 16 for the Mohawks. There's been – it was something, I must say, last night watching the junior high game. There's a little history there between your son and Dave Hendricks' son. Yeah. The, you two played each other, what, 30 years ago or so? Uh, yeah, Dave and I played against each other <laughs> in the 80s. And, and then, uh, actually, our sons have played a lot of baseball against each other and together. And together. On the same team, the uh, travel team. So they know each other well. The uh, bootleg. Uh, he got uh -oh. the first down. We're going to have a flag. What's the penalty here? I don't know, but Mason Tillman seems to feel it might be on him because he's slapping his head. It might be, though, against Hazen for a I clip. Think, I think it's an illegal block. block. The, yeah, yeah, block. That's what it is. Illegal, they call it illegal use of the hands or whatever, but it's going to go against the Hornets. They sent their big guy out there. He, he hung it out to try to get that first down. But they're going to walk it back the other way. And while they do, we're going to thank Clay County, County Abstract on 2nd Street and Pickett, Van Witten and staff for true professionals and for your real estate transactions, including title searches, title insurance and closings. Contact Clay County Abstract on the square and Pickett, 870-598-5207. Now, that's a spot foul, too, so there's going to be a first down, and they're going to spot the football. We're at the 46 of the Mohawks. First and ten. Nope. Let me rephrase well, that. I'm not really sure what they're – yeah, I think they have decided now it, it will be a first and ten. they got to move the other end of the chain down. For a minute there, they had a first and eight. <laughs> the ever 
rear first down and eight. Right into the middle again, and the Mohawks stand him up. And there's just no room in there, Tim. It's just nope. whatever they can pick, they can pick. As Dylan West, number 57, enters the game. Regan Mayberry, 11, is going to check out. He gets a good hand there from Daffron. Yeah, it's a minute. It's also fun, as, as we've talked about, we're hearing a lot of names that are very familiar. Daffron, Lemons, Harold. <laughs> These are names that have been – Generational. Generational. We're, we're getting into multiple generations here, and that's a fun part of it. There's the keeper. Nate got spun out. There's the oh, pass. Nice. Good job to step in front over there on the far side. That's, that's Lemons in great position. Yeah, Hayden Lemons with some good hands. There's another, like you said, generational. We've had uh, several good Lemons players. Uh, I, I couldn't help but notice the uh, – the starting offense for the 1987 team, which you were on, mm -hmm. two of the self boys, I yes, believe, sir. on that squad. We've had so we don't have any currently. <laughs> no, 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 I but, don't, but uh, I mean, you look at this with Nate Mallard, he's generational. His dad yes, played here. Yeah, you played Tillman, with him. Tillman, Tillman, uh, generational. Shaw, uh, Harold, uh, you look at them, they're out there. That's right, and that's some of the fun about it. Yep, there you go. All right, well, we've got a timeout on the field with just 36 seconds to go in the third quarter. We'll take a short break. Be back with more in a moment. You're watching Mohawk Football on White C. Say hello to the Internet of tomorrow. Compelling, absorbing, all-encompassing. Delivered to your home at 100 megabits per second. Now that's fast, really fast. All so that you can do a little of this, this, and a whole lot of this. With none of that. Need speed? Welcome to the Internet of Tomorrow, today. Get 100 meg internet from New Wave Communications for as low as $69.99 a month for the first 12 months. Save even more when you bundle. Call today. Welcome back to Parker Field. Tim Blair and Sean Parker bringing you the play-by-play -play tonight as the Piggott Mohawks host the Hazen Hornets. Non-conference action to begin the 2017 campaign, and Hazen with the football third down and movement. Oh, it was third and eight, that. but we're just going to go ahead and call it. It's closer to third and 13. Yeah, it will be now. Uh, Hornets, and it, when a guy fires off, but when he takes that step and goes, oops, <laughs> <laughs> it's almost. You Did know, anybody see that? <laughs> there were two of them actually that moved, so we'll uh, we'll spread the blame around. They'll back them up five yards. That'll bring up a third down, and the football is just inside Mohawk territory, out there by the Big P. As we mentioned earlier, since with the rain last night, they they came out and finished the field prep this afternoon. Field looks great, in great condition. Can't tell that we got a, just a soaker last night, yesterday, and the day before. Oh, with a snap, fakes to the first guy, the spin uh -oh. move, gives it off to 21, and oh, he breaks the tackle. Tackles. He's got it out there. Oh, Lemons, Lemons with a missed down. tackle, cuts back across field, and in space, takes it to the house for the touchdown. No 49 laundry. yards. No laundry on the floor, on the field, so it looks like that will probably stand up. We'd like to thank Pickett Pharmacy for the fastest, friendliest experience around. Visit them on the square. They provide free local delivery, curbside service, competitive pricing, and easy prescription transfers with a free vitamin program. Locally owned and operated, Pickett Pharmacy, where our patients are our family. Green with the touchdown, uh, 22 seconds to go in the third. Now they'll line up for the two-point conversion, but basically we talked about earlier, once he was in space, a lot of missed tackles, but not so much no. on the two-point conversion. They stack him up. Mohawk lead remains 10. More Mohawk jerseys than Hazen jerseys at the point of attack, and that's the way it is as the uh, Mohawks hold on the two-point conversion attempt. And we've got just a few seconds left in the quarter. We'll, ha we'll hang here until the end of the quarter, talk a little bit about... Uh, this season to come. We're already looking ahead. We don't want to look too far ahead, but we've got non-conference Portageville, the Rector game the week after that. Then we get into uh, the real meat of the schedule with Osceola coming to town for the uh, homecoming contest. We get Rivercrest, Newport at home. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's <laughs> pivotal, Tim, and that, and that, that 
brutal, brutal three um uh, 3-3A conference is the Mohawks have back-to-back-to-back home games against Osceola, Rivercrest, Newport. They're all right here in Pickett, where last year we were on the road three right. straight weeks. This year they've got them here. And we went, of course, 2-1 and one against those three teams last year. Went to Osceola and I think surprised them a bit. They've got a new coach this year, a little bit of a different attitude. And they're going to be a handful, but we'll be ready for them. Rivercrest, of course, they'll be moving up to 4A next year. This will be the last uh, cycle that we should, at least for the time being, have them in conference. And then Newport, they're always going to show up. They're always going to be tough. Not quite as good as last year, but they're always going to be tough. Will Squibber. Ball on the ground, and that is the worst thing kicked. Regan Mayberry beating himself up because he kicked the football and it's covered by the Hazen Hornets. And 99, the man that come up with the football, but he comes up a little shaky. Well, i tell you why that thing was, it's Cade Perry that comes up with Perry the football. Perry is gonna have to, I believe, come out of the ball game. He's, he's grabbing the left, either hamstring or calf muscle. We also wanna give you an injury update on Coach Harrell. If you were here last night, he over-celebrated. He's a little tight out there, but he seems to be getting around pretty good. I guess he's taped up well. He's got a hamstring injury. He has either a hammy or uh, maybe a little bit of a calf muscle pull, but uh, over celebration on Brayton Ralph's touchdown, I believe. Here we go. The toss back. New man in the backfield's 33, and boy, he gets upended. Yeah, that was John Jones. Johnny Jones, got him. first man there. Yeah, Luke, the, Luke Boyd changed the direction, changed the play, and then John Jones upended him. It's 33 on the carry. I believe that was his first carry of the ball game. If we can figure out who he is here and find him on our roster. Yeah, we may have to turn the light on in here. And that's the end of the third quarter. Buchanan, Buchanan for Hazen on the carry. 24-14 after three. We'll be back with fourth quarter action in a moment on YHC. For the fastest, friendliest service around, visit us at Pickett Pharmacy on the Square. We provide free local delivery and curbside service. Additionally, we have competitive pricing, easy prescription transfers, and a free vitamin program. We're locally owned and operated. Come by Pickett Pharmacy today, where our patients are our family. All right, we're back as we begin fourth quarter play from Parker Field. The Mohawks with the lead. Hazen with the football trailing by 10. Counter play right into the middle of the oh, Mohawk no, line, good. and they come up and put a couple of good licks on him. That a boy, Nate Mallard. Nate Mallard was the there to lead the way. Cade Harrell, Boyd. The Mohawks tackling by committee that I want to tell you what Nate Mallard, the senior All-Stater, said just then. No. No. No, <laughs> you will not. He is so oh, low-key. We're talking about a couple of kids, too, on the best under the sun team on that defense. Right. You've got a couple of kids that almost had 150 tackles last season. I mean, there right. is a, a talented group. But more than that, they're a hard-working group. I love what Coach Harrell said. Nobody that game plans against Piggott will do it without knowing where Nate Mallard is. And yeah. that time, he was in on the pile. Yeah. Big time that time, big yeah. stop Lloyd, Lloyd as Toll Lloyd. tried to take it on the keeper up the middle. He's waxed after a gain yeah. of a yard, maybe less. Fourth Sophomore down. Just taking a whooping, taking a beating in there. This would be a point where if you're the Hayson coach, you might want to think about <laughs> saving some of your starters, but uh, they don't have much bench over there. If you can kind of see from our coverage here, you see a few guys over there in jerseys, but we've seen about – three or four subs, and that's about it on both sides of the football. And in a physical team like the Piggott Mohawks will eventually wear you down. Having to bring somebody in just to fill out the lineup now as they prepare to their punt formation. Mohawks have nobody back. 18 seconds on the uh, play clock. They go after it. Ooh, good job that time. That is a great punt. Good punt's going to roll down inside or just outside the 10 at about the 12, 13-yard line. 
And that's where the Hazen Hornets will take over first and 10 here in the fourth quarter, trailing by 10. Tim, we're going to take a moment to show our appreciation to Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant and Ticket, offering the most authentic Mexican food in the area. Their classic entrees are made to order and delivered right to your table. Los Compadres always has fast and friendly service and to-go orders. Lunch specials are always available. There's no better place to gather with friends and family than Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant at 648 East Main Street in Piggott. I'm surprised they haven't named a dish after Coach Hearn yet. They did. Oh, did they? It's called the Coach Special. Oh, well, how do you say that? Well, never mind. All right, Mohawks with the football deep. Mohawks just pounded that over the left side for a couple yards. That was Cade, the senior. I'm not real comfortable with a 10-point lead against a team that does have breakaway speed, as they've shown when they got into the open field. But I think what Coach Harrell's going to do right now is try to burn up the biggest part of the fourth quarter, hopefully moving the football downfield a, a chunk at a time about like that. You go back to the old three yards in a cloud of dust. Follow your big lineman. Well, that's what he's doing, Tim. He's just putting this game in the hands of that offensive line. There's the, the spin, the trap again, straight ahead. Another little gainer. See where they spot the football. Only going to be about a yard on that one, maybe two. It's going to bring up a third and five. Gunner Shaw is going to check in. As the Mohawks look at a third and five, they've got the football inside their territory pretty deep, right just outside the 15. We'll call it the 16-yard line. And this is not an easy conversion here to pick up the first down. Now, you got to be extra careful this deep in Hazen territory. Uh, hang on to the football, take care of it. Hazen stacks it in the box again, straight ahead, Boy, and all that, that time, out. they're all over him. Yeah, they absolutely knew that was coming. So that's going to bring up a fourth down, and this is the point where you are glad you have Quentin Reeves. You want to get off a good, clean punt, give him good protection. But you've also got that tall guy that's athletic and can jump on any snap. <laughs> it's kind of like the theory of having a first baseman that's a tall guy. Yeah. But he's also a good athlete. We have an excellent, excellent snapper. You know, Cade, Cade Harrell does the long snapping. He's experienced. And, you know, worst-case scenario here is you take a safety. But the Mohawks are going to try to pin him right. back. Gets and a good one he away. He did drill it. And he called a fair catch, and that's inside the 50. So the football will be out around midfield once again for the Hayes and Hornets. But last time they struck from there, so we'll see what they can do. We'll be back with more fourth quarter action in a moment right here on YHC. Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant on East Main and Piggott offers the most authentic Mexican food in the area. All of their meals begin with their signature chips and salsa. Their classic entrees are made to order and delivered right to your table. Los Compadres always has fast, friendly service, and to-go orders and lunch specials are always available. There's no better place to gather with friends and family than Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant on East Main in Piggott. All right, we're back. And the Hornets looking to try to cut into that 10-point lead. 7.53 to play in regulation. Well, they just won't go away, Tim. Oh. Green around the right end. He's going to have a pretty good gainer. Looks like four, maybe five yards. Let's see where the spot is. And they look like our linebackers are Boyd coming to the sideline. Substitution now for the Mohawks as uh, – Coach will get some of the other players in sparingly, I would imagine. He'd like to give his starters plenty of work. They've been wanting to hit somebody other than their own guys for a while. you got to give them an opportunity to get a good workout. But you also got to start thinking about the week two and three. Well, Alex Gibson, number 52, the all-district center, is playing D-tackle at the moment. Man wide to the right. Oh. The ball snapped over to his head. The ball no, loose the ball on the ground. Loose. You know what? I think Hazen's going to have it. Yeah, I'll tell you, that slipped right through the quarterback's hand. It's almost like he looked away just as the ball came back and got lucky they covered it. That's all I know. So it's going to be third down, close to 16, about a 15-yard to go for the first. Substitutions again. Mohawks will work in some fresh horses on just 
about every play we're doing a little bit of substituting now. And for a Hazen Hornet, that's the last thing you want to see is some fresh guy across from you. Fresh legs. Wide house to both sides. Pistol backfield, I guess you'd call he's it. Rolling out. Total spins, and he's oh, going to be dropped. dropped oh, my Dylan goodness. Dylan Miller. Dylan was, was the, the first, first man. Here. And he got a lot of help just in case, but he didn't need it. Jones, Harrell, Bleed Boyd was there as well, but a big loss, and the Hornets are going the other way again. It's going to be interesting. They've had a couple of big plays, but we'll get Daniel Gossett and all, you know, once we get this game wrapped up and have a chance to look at the stats, I'll have all of them, of course, in next week's edition of the CCTD. All the details on last night's junior high game and tonight's contest. Tim, what do you dial up on uh, fourth down and 30? I'm going to probably air it out. Uh. Fourth and 35. Yeah, there we go. That's one of those plays that you don't really have anything in your playbook. you got a choice. You can throw deep and hope if it is picked off, it's as far as you would have punted it to begin with. You know that there's the old saying, when you punt, three things can happen and two of them are bad. So I'm not really sure. They have, they've done a, a pretty good job of their punting. All their special teams have been up to it. I don't think either coach is going to have much problem with his special teams uh, coming out of this one. Well, the Mohawk kick coverage let a big return come that set up a touchdown. Uh, so they're going to be looking at coverage and talking about staying in their lanes and being disciplined. Yep. But other than that, I can't think of anything. That, no. Ooh. You know what? Looks like Cade got close to that one. Oh, he touched it. He touched it. He touched yep. that way touched right it near down. the 40. We're going to get about another five yards back. It was. Yeah, uh, see if they caught it. Yeah, they by, did. Yeah, touched by one of the Hornets. So that's where the Mohawks will take over first and 10. We've got 5.23 to go in regulation. The Mohawks holding on to a 10-point lead, 24-14 here at Parker Field. We needed a beanbag right there. <laughs> you need the beanbag. You bag. didn't throw the beanbag. Saw one earlier come out over on the far side. But yeah, we're uh, – Already kind of looking forward to the rest of the season. It should be a good one. We're looking forward to getting into uh, conference play later on. And, of course, you know, it's going to be an interesting season as we go forward. Fox out of the flex T and goes oh, he's back got to pass. He's got him wide open. open. He's got two. He got his man, and it is Dylan, Dylan Bellers. Bellers. And they got a horse collared on the way down. He got the catch, and the funny thing was, is that Reeves was more open and probably would have scored if he hit him across the middle because Quentin ran right up the middle. Nobody picked him up. Well, hey, the Hazen defense has committed to stopping the run. They're absolutely committed. And 99's gimped up again. He'll walk it slow back, and I think he might be patting the helmet here in a second. But, yeah, Quentin Reeves is actually more wide open. Right down the middle of the scene. <laughs> it's... <laughs> he came back telling Gossett that. Well, hey, I was open a, too. They didn't mark a penalty off, did they? Nope. I thought they were going to get a horse collar there. Well, they've changed the emphasis on that this year. There's a new emphasis in not only calling the uh, horse collar if you get a hold of the back of the shoulder pads, but if you grab the jersey in what they call the name area, of course, for college, where the name of the player is, it's considered a horse collar. It was funny, last night in the junior high game, Coach Hendricks wanted a horse collar call on a tackle on Joseph Baker, but I took a photo of it. It was a clean tackle. And we got a break. Time out on the field. 24-14 Mohawks, 4.46 to play. Back with more on YHC. For the fastest, friendliest service around, visit us at Pickett Pharmacy on the Square. We provide free local delivery and curbside service. Additionally, we have competitive pricing, easy prescription transfers, and a free vitamin program. We're locally owned and operated. Come by Pickett Pharmacy today, where our patients are our family. Welcome back to Parker Field. Tim Blair and Sean Parker bringing you the call of the game tonight here on YHCTV, YHC.com. Et al. And the Mohawks come up. Facing second down and about nine to go for the first. They're in Hazen territory, threatening again with a 10-point lead. The turn to pitch back, I think it's Buchanan, isn't it? Yeah, he was down. 
That was the misdirection play. They all take one step to the left, then sweep right. And Hazen sniffed that one out pretty good. Still no score on that Melbourne Corning game. Let's see. Blival leading Osceola, 13-7. That's a good rivalry. Rivercrest beating Perigold, 35-6 in the third. As the Bohawks come to the line, clock running coming up on the four-minute mark of the ball game. Now the flex T. It's John Jones, that's left Cade. side. John tries to that's get out. Cade. Oh, rather, that's Cade Harrell, and he tried to get outside. Pulled down from behind. For a gain that, of about five, though. That's the same play they ran earlier when uh, Cade broke it, and it came back for a block in the back. So we got fourth down for the Mohawks. The clock's running, Tim. The clock running with 345 now. I don't think Hazen, you know, if this were a regular season or conference game, you might want to start burning timeouts to try to get yourself an opportunity. Gunnar Shaw comes to the sideline for the Mohawks with a big round of applause from the partisan crowd. Good crowd across the way from the folks from Hazen, though. They've hung in there. So we wish them the best of luck on that long drive home. Gossett back. He's looking out to the flat. Back cross goes, looks to the end zone. Got a man deep. Oh, couldn't hang on to it. I think wow. it was Quentin Reeves, wasn't it? Yeah, in the back of the end zone, the ball was there. He had a man between him and the ball, but and I think he was trying to figure out if he was going to be out of bounds when he caught it. But he, he looked like he was watching it into his hands, and it just glanced right off. Well, that clock, was a fourth down play. Clock stops at 3.11 to play, and ball goes over to the Hazen Hornets. They trail it by 10 points, 24-14. I really kind of expected a little more scoring out of the Mohawks, but they've uh, stuck to their game plan of when they did get the ball to try to go with the ball control. Sweat men wide both sides of the field, pistol backfield. Handed off over the left side, but no room. No, nothing doing. That's what they're going to do. They're just... They're just running out clock then. They're ready to make that bus ride. Yeah, we've seen a lot of, uh, saw Logan Dixon down there. A lot of the other guys that have spent time out here on the field. I saw T.J. Harris coming up through the crowd earlier. Of course, the all-time rushing leader here at Pickett High School. Uh, 2006 uh, was a lot of fun that year, though we could have won a couple more games that would have been even nicer. Uh, well, we also saw our, our last thousand yard rusher, Justin Goddings, in the crowd tonight. Yep. And Albert Williams Baptist, the first sprinter for the Williams Baptist uh, track team. Uh, and there's going to be a flag, I believe. Yeah, before the snap. They ran it down. I think they may have run the, the uh, play clock out. I think they out. did. I oh, think they ran out No, they called a little bit of movement on them there. And look at the crowd starting to make a move. Everybody's going to put this one, I guess, in the book at the 222 mark. Several of the folks starting to make their way toward the exits here at Parker Field. Well, Tim, a 10-point lead is significant. I mean, it, it takes two scores. Uh, you, can't, you can't lose. One touchdown and a conversion doesn't beat you. But that's not what the Mohawks are thinking. It. No. No, you uh, want to play through. There's not going to be a lot of time left for Hazen, but if they were to strike here, it could be a whole different ball game. Second down and 17. 17. <laughs> and if they're on the 15-yard line. There's the pass and the flat. Oh, he's right there. Who is another it? Another lost yardage play. Oh, man, great job by the Mohawk defense to cover in the flat. Yeah. That was Dylan Bellers again. Quentin Reeves coming over to help. Cade Harrell, John Jones. They swarm to the football. If you've got to deal with one of them, you're going to deal with a bunch of them. They don't stand around and spectate. They get to the football. They put the hat on the man, and they make the stop. Take care of the fundamentals, and that's how you win football games in this part of the country. Well, with a minute and a half, it's about third down and 21, 22. I, I can't see the marker down here. A round of applause for the band down there. They didn't do a halftime show because they really thought it would be raining, so we only got to see the uh, drum line earlier. Had that up on our Facebook Live page a little bit during the halftime break. Oh, Toll's going to keep it. He's outside, but he's dragged down from behind right at the line of scrimmage. 
Another good job by the Mohawk defense to string the play out. We're under a minute to play. This one's all over but the shouting and a long bus ride home for the Hornets. 45 seconds winding on fourth down and a mile. Why don't we go ahead and mention all of our sponsors one time and then give them a thank you for... We do. Uh, we do for, appreciate Pigot Realty, Pumpkin Hollow, Custom Car Care, Dan Gossett Real Estate, Mohawk Mini Storage, Pigot Family Medical Clinic, Clay County Abstract, Pigot Pharmacy, and Los Compadres Mexican Restaurant. Saw Luke Carpenter going in, another, another multi-generational player there. And uh, I'm sure there's some other subs that we didn't get a chance to call their numbers. Yep. Still some starters out there. I see Trey Gossett still at that defensive back. Uh, Jones and Harrell, such. Uh, they don't want to give up the big play here late. They're going to let it Time is out. running down, and this one is going to be history. That'll That's the ball game. The Piggy Mohawks have beaten the Hazen Hornets 24-14. Game one of the 2017 campaign as they begin 1-0 and and hopefully, as Coach Harrell says, hopefully to be the best team in Pigott Mohawk football history, and that's to reach the 12-win plateau. Hasn't been done in a long time, but what did he tell us one time? If you're not dreaming big, if people don't tell you you're crazy, you're probably not dreaming big <laughs> yeah. enough, well. and that's exactly what they're wanting to do. Well, step one, goal one, accomplished. You got opening opening night. You got to play against somebody else. You got to play at home, and it's a beginning. It's a start. It's a long season, and it's a tough season, and the Mohawks are up for the task. And you've got to commend the Hazen Hornets. Uh, 2A school with limited numbers, but they're always powerful. They've got a great coach and great community and kids, and they made this trip for this home and home. We probably will not see them again in this home and home. Mm -hmm. But they they did not fold. They didn't give up. They just kept playing, playing hard. I like to see some of the, uh, we won't call them old Mohawks, but some of the more experienced Mohawks. There's Joe Cole, Ricky Shaw, Terry Jones, some of the guys headed down that way, and some of the younger ones, too. Oh, Phil Daffron. Phil Daffron and all that. Uh, it's great. They're still here. It's a great legacy, and that's a, what, a lot of what Michael and the, the coaches teach. It's the legacy of Pickett Mohawk football, and we're proud to be a part of it. Indeed. Tim, I've enjoyed it. Enjoyed it, Sean. Be sure to tune in next week. The Mohawks will be on the road at Portageville on YHC. And the following week, me and Sean will be down at Rector for the Mohawks as they take on the Cougars on the CCTD Facebook page. So we'll see you then. Until next time, Tim Blair and Sean Parker for YHC TV.